1984, Freddy Krueger, with his razor-fingered glove, became a horror icon attacking teens in their sleep. The box office success of A Nightmare on Elm Street prompted an immediate sequel in 1985 called A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. But instead of a final girl facing Freddy, there was a final boy played by Mark Patton. And horror fans didn't know how to react. When I first started going to show, people would walk up to my table and tell me how much they hated the movie. You know what I mean? Like, what are you doing here? There was a backlash aimed at Patton and his character of Jesse, who was ridiculed for screaming like a girl and informing the film with a gay subtext. The documentary Scream Queen, My Nightmare on Elm Street, looks back on that film to examine how the homophobic response it generated contributed to Patton abandoning his film career. Scream Queen connects the dots for younger generations between AIDS and how playing a character perceived as gay could impact an actor's career, says co-director Tyler Jensen. That's definitely the generational divide, especially for me, was not understanding that those two things were related. And we now love to celebrate this film as being the gayest horror film ever made. And people are really, they like hold on to it very dearly. Co-director Roman Kimienti grew up with the Freddy Krueger films. He recalls loving Nightmare on Elm Street too, while other horror fans hated it. But no one could really say why other than just eh. You know, it was, it was, it had gained a reputation for being gay before people even had the terminology for that. Jensen says for many, it was the first gay film they could enjoy without anyone suspecting it was gay. And that's, I think, the beauty of why this movie is so important to people and why its legacy continues. But it's been a painful legacy for Patton, because for years, director Jack Shoulder and writer David Chaskin denied any intentional gay subtext, until the film started winning praise for being ahead of its time. There definitely was this kind of race to reclaim who gets to take ownership of the new queer cult classic, Nightmare on Elm Street 2. For the longest time, those in the creative helm didn't want to own up to the fact. And then once, you know, the tide started turning and being gay was more acceptable, they started to want to, you know, claim it as their own again. And I think Mark went on this journey to be like, um, you don't get to change your mind 30 years later and, and reap the rewards of what he had to suffer through. Thanks to Mark Patton, Freddy is now proving to be an unlikely bridge connecting horror fans with the gay community and the LGBTQ plus community with horror. Beth Accomando, KPBS News.